Hi everybody and welcome back to Art Life Today. I'm Mrs B and I'm here to show you how to create a really cool 3D animal using two simple materials. Construction is one of my favourite types of art because you're using your fine motor skills to mould and create something normally three-dimensional. So we're going to work with some foil today and some paper clay to build and create your very own animal. Now this can be adapted, it does not have to be a lion. So please make sure that you use your creativity to use the steps I show you, but to alter and adapt the lesson into your own artwork. So you'll only need two materials today. We're going to be making a three-dimensional sculpture and we're going to be using the inside of the sculpture with aluminium foil. So you can get that at any supermarket. You don't need all that much either. So hopefully you have some in your kitchen. And the main material today that we're going to be using is something called paper clay. Now paper clay is becoming more easily accessible. I believe you can get some from Kmart. Today I'll be using a brand called Magic Clay, which is stocked from Zart Art, and I'll leave a materials link down below for you. This particular pack's a really great one because you get a huge variety of colors. You can mix the colors of Magic Clay. It's really fantastic and tactile. You can actually mix the colors together, but it does make it easier if you're given a really wide variety, beautiful bunch of colors already for you. All right, let's get started. So together, we're now going to create a really gorgeous three-dimensional animal. Now you can adapt this task and do whatever animal you like. Today, I'm just gonna take inspiration from um, this plastic animal of a lion here. I might turn it into a male lion with a mane around it, but we wanna have a look at the basic shapes of an animal that looks like this. First, you've got the body. We'll need a head and four legs. Now, you could make the entire thing out of paper clay, but this stuff can be expensive, um, and so we want it to go a long way. Alfoil is much cheaper, so we're actually going to do the inside of the animal using alfoil. So, to tear off a piece, we're literally going to scrunch it up. Kids will love this as well it's very tactile and fun you can make it as big as you like but the idea is just to give yourself a bit of a body shape we're going to repeat this process adding four legs and a head proportionately the head does need to be smaller than the body for it to make sense does not need to be a perfect circle by any means, but it does need to make sense size-wise. Now, this is a fantastic collection of wonderful colors. As I said though, you can mix colors together. So you can either choose to be realistic with your color scheme or you can choose to be a bit abstract with it. I, for now, I'm gonna go sort of realistic colors. So I'm gonna use this kind of skin color-y peach and some yellow for the body. And then I'm going to use some of this orange for the mane. Now it does dry out, so don't leave it open too long. I wanna show you what happens when you mix the colors together can see it's really quite lovely to play with. It's not messy, doesn't get on my hands. It's really, really nice and um, got a fantastic texture. So I've got my yellow there. If you do have a dirty surface, it will pick up the dirt. All right, I'm gonna add some of my peach to my yellow here and I'm just going to mix it like this. You can do something called marbling where the colors intertwine almost like marble. Like this. 
or you could continue to mix them together like this and it will change the color a little bit. So you can see it's sort of making a lighter yellow for me. Cool. So for younger kids, it might be worthwhile using a bit of masking tape to sort of attach the legs and things like that first. You can just attach the magic clay around it and it will stick, but it can be fiddly. So I'll just show you this option um, in case you are working with some younger ones. might be easier now to show you how to attach the magic clay. So again, we're attaching it in quite a thin sort of sheet directly over the top. And we're gonna continue to flatten the magic clay. And you can see here, it joins very easily. It's literally just pushing down with your finger and then smoothening it out. And that's gonna help the magic clay to stay in place, you can see that. He already stands up, he's starting to look a bit like an animal. If you're an art teacher, you will need to monitor how much the kids use because they do tend to apply the magic clay really thickly when it's just not necessary. So you can just start to spread the clay as far as it'll go. Obviously you don't want to make holes so that you can see the inside, but you can sort of just push the clay to where you want it to go to spread it out and make it go further. hands to make the texture nice and smooth. Some, an activity I did a couple of years ago with my grade sixes, which was a fantastic success. As their graduation, last kind of artwork as a primary school student, they created a little mini me magic clay sculpture. So they created a sculpture of themselves, but they did it imagining themselves as what they want to be when they grow up. And it was fantastic for them to, you know, create themselves as rock stars or skateboard stars and they can keep that forever. So similar with the legs, just need a, a bit of a longer piece now. I'd recommend this task for probably fourth grade and onwards might be a little bit fiddly for the younger ones. So it does start to dry out maybe within sort of half an hour to an hour and the air around us starts to dry it out naturally. So you can't come back to the task unless you probably wrap it in some cling wrap or um, something to keep the clay nice and moist. So that's the basic shape of my animal. Now I'm gonna add some details like a tail, a mane and a face to really bring it to life. Clay is dry, you can actually draw with a 
texture if you're wanting to do some details like eyes. You could even stick actual little Google eyes in there if you wanted to while it's wet. Um, but I'm going to try to create my details as much as I can just using the Magic Clay. You can also cut the Magic Clay with scissors. You can see that I'm sort of just trying to mould my shapes with my fingers, but um, younger kids might actually find it a bit easier just to cut the shapes that they want. might be interested in another task using magic clay that I've done of a flamingo. Um, it's one of the videos I've created just in the past if you want to go check that out. It's using similar strategies however you also create a background for the animal. But how good's the the manipulation? I'm rolling, I'm twisting, I'm creating different shapes just with my hands. First thing I'm going to do is his tail. You can see here, just cutting the magic clay, just like that, to add some texture, make it look like the hairs on the bottom of the tail. What I might do is add some black to this orange to really show you what happens when you marble the colours. Cool, hey? I'm just pinching the mane like this, but just like I did with the tail, you might choose to snip it. I'll actually show you what that looks like. Probably need to make it a bit flatter. I think that looks better. I might do that. There he is. I'll call him Lenny. Lenny the lion. Now, once that dries, you won't be able to manipulate it. So please make sure you add any details you want prior. You can add more magic clay over the top. It will stick, um, but you won't be able to change the shape of anything that has dried. Enjoy creating Lenny the Lion or your very own animal today and you enjoy all the future art lessons from Art Life. If you subscribe, you'll be able to get some notifications of my future videos. Thanks again for joining me. See you later.